been spectacular this season. Yesterday, Rodgers was asked about the potential of winning his third MVP. Here's what he said. Not many guys that have won three, so that would definitely mean a lot. I feel like I've been in the conversation, you know, a number of years outside of the two that I've won. We're talking about in 12 when AP went nuts against us in the last game of the year. I had a pretty good year that year. Obviously, in 16, we made our run and uh, led the league in passing touchdowns. And didn't really get a sniff for some reason that year, but, you know, I definitely felt like I was in the conversation. Uh, it's, you know, it's nice to be back okay. in the conversation. I, I'm so happy that we played that sound. This was my request today, Dominique, because you and I love psychoanalyzing people. <laughs> and I thought that was a fascinating insight into how you get to be Aaron Rodgers. So many players will say, oh, I don't care about that. It doesn't mean anything to me. I just want to win. There he is saying, yeah, I got left out of this conversation a few years ago when I deserved it. And I want the damn trophy this year. I love that he said that. <laughs> yeah, Aaron Rodgers is the best because we don't need to psychoanalyze him. He comes out and tells us exactly how he feels after he after they drafted Jordan Love. All those things come up, and Aaron Rodgers is completely forthright with the way he feels. And I respect it, and I think that it's probably hard psychologically to be considered maybe the most talented, maybe the best quarterback of all time for much of your career. And then you have a couple rough seasons, and this guy named Patrick Mahomes moseys on into the league, and it seems like we all forgot how good Aaron <laughs> Rodgers was. And we talk about Patrick Mahomes like, He's the greatest of all time after just a couple years. So I can understand Aaron Rodgers thinking, I put in all this work year after year after year. I'm not going to be shy about it. I want the MVP. Yeah, I love it. Lewis Riddick, what do you think? When you hear Aaron Rodgers saying things like that, what thoughts go through your mind? It takes me back to when we interviewed him on Monday Night Football on a production call. And I sat there going, you know, after he was done, I thought, is that it? Can we talk to him a little bit longer? Can we just hear him talk a little bit more? The guy is so cerebral and has so much that he can talk about and is so like worldly and, and kind of calm and kind of understands his place in history, but, but at the same time is very keenly aware of what he perceives to be the disrespect that he has been shown when you are having the quote-unquote GOAT conversation. He knows he's pretty darn good. He knows he's doing things up there within that offense that had he, if he had some of the weapons that maybe some of the other wide receivers has had, have had, like right now, now he's really, really good wide receivers back in his day. But if he had some of the weapons that some of the other pe people have right now, there's no telling what his numbers can be. He's aware of that. He's aware of what people are saying, although he always has that nice, calm, cool demeanor. This is a guy who's supremely motivated by the disrespect. And at any point in time, or rather at all points in time, more than happy to shove it right down your throat as far as that disrespect that he feels as though he's getting. And I love everything about it. I absolutely <laughs> love everything about it. Hey, Dominique, it feels like he might as well be looking right into us and saying, nowadays everybody wants to talk like they got something to say, but nothing comes out when they move their lips just a bunch of gibberish, and everyone acts like they forgot about Aaron. That's basically wow. what it feels to me that like he's saying. I, I appreciate you update your hip hop, hip hop references from Rapper's Delight to Dre. That is, that is damn impressive. Aaron Rodgers owed you some respect for the rapping that you just did on this program. <laughs> I, and I cleaned it up in an appropriate way as well. Or super quickly, if you had a vote right now, Dominique, who gets it? Uh, is it, is it yeah, Aaron yes Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes? Yeah, yesterday I said Aaron Rodgers. And after his comments, I have not changed my mind. I'm going to stick with Aaron Rodgers. Though, he does have more weapons than people give him credit for. Devontae's Lewis. good. Aaron Jones is good. And that offensive line protects the hell out of him. Lewis, who gets your vote? Yeah. <laughs> Look, you know, I, I give it to Patrick just because I think he's so different but Aaron Rodgers gets the MVP of the guy who, I'll tell you what, his attitude, that's the most valuable attitude that I, that, in the NFL. I love everything about his edginess, man. I'm telling you, this guy is one of a kind. We're going we're gonna to miss him when he's out of this league. That's for sure. Okay. 846 winning percentage this season. It's the fourth best matchup this late in the year in the Super Bowl era. But there's more. The Saints and Chiefs are both 36 and 9 over the last three seasons. That is tied for the best record in the NFL. So this is a potential Super Bowl preview. And to the question mark, Drew Brees. He has been designated to return to practice, but will he start? Sean Payton says Brees still has, quote, a ways to go as he recovers from 11 broken ribs and a punctured lung. We haven't ruled anything just because we don't have to. You know, he's got a ways to go still, and, we, we, you know, he's going to be someone that you know, we're not going to hurry back and just put him in the game. I, I think that the significance of the injuries 
are such that you, you know you got to make sure he can function and, and feel confident. All right, and we have Adam Schefter with us as we do every Thursday morning. Schefter, good morning. What is the latest on the situation with Drew Brees? Well, good morning, Green. I think Sean Payton, the Saints head coach, said an awful lot there. The fact that he said that Drew Brees has a long ways to go, that he's not quite healthy yet, tells you that Taysom Hill is on track to start Sunday against the Kansas City Chiefs. The Saints did not want to bring back Brees until he's close to or at 100%. They did not want to bring him back until he's got, got f close to full range of motion. Clearly, listening to Sean Payton there, it doesn't sound like he's close to 100% at this time, and it doesn't sound like he's got full range of motion. And if he doesn't have those two things, then it's going to be hard for them to put him into a spot where they believe he's compromised. And Taysom Hill has played pretty well. Did lose Sunday at Philadelphia, but before then had won three straight games. And so it sounds like it's tracking to be Taysom Hill versus Patrick Mahomes in this great late season matchup. Okay, so stay, let me keep Shefty with us as well as we bring in the rest of our crew this morning and say hello to Dominique Foxworth and Lewis Riddick who are here. And, and let's just start at the very top, and then I want to work my way through some of the other decisions. But, Lewis, is it as simple as this? If the doctors clear Drew Brees, do you have any question about putting him back on the field? No, Greeny, because the doctors are the professionals, and they're the ones who are in charge of safeguarding Drew's help. And, you know, that, that's one of those situations where when you're talking about how information flows throughout an organization, when you're talking about player health, it has to be up to the medical staff to determine whether or not it's safe for a player to return to the field. General managers, coaches, they can't make those decisions. They're not doctors. They're not licensed medical professionals. So if they say he can play, you have to trust that when you set up your organization in the first place that they're going to give you the right advice. So if he, if they say he's ready to go, you put him out there. If they say he's not, you don't. It's really that simple. It's black and white to me. Okay, so that's good. So, Dominique, let me come over to you on that thought then because they got three weeks left in the season. You have a lot to play for. You were making the point right. this morning. This game and these last three games are critically important to the Saints. Yeah, I mean, they feel like almost playoff games because the Saints need to get that first round by. It's obviously a, a quicker path to the Super Bowl for anyone to get a bye. But with an aging quarterback, the fewer games you can play, the more important it is to, to get that, to secure that situation. So I feel Lewis on that one. I think you want to get Drew out there as quickly as possible. And we understand that Taysom Hill has won several games and has played better, frankly, better than I expected him to play. But we also need to understand that they played a team that had a receiver playing quarterback. They also played the Falcons and then they lost to a team last week whose quarterback was in his first start. So I'm not sure as, as many games as they've won, I'm not sure that this team is feeling all that confident about a Taysom Hill-led uh, game into uh, Kansas City. So there's two pieces of this I want to pick up on. Let's pick up on that one first. Shefty, we had a discussion here yesterday. Considering the offense they're going up against this weekend, do you know if there was any thought given, if there has been any thought given inside the organization to going with Jameis Winston this weekend, who, while obviously turnover prone, might give them the opportunity to be more explosive than Hill does? You're not the first person to ask me that question, Greeny, but I don't believe it's been a conversation that's come up with any frequency or any meaning within the Saints organization. I think they really like Taysom Hill an awful lot, despite the fact that they lost Sunday against the Philadelphia Eagles. And I think Taysom Hill is going to continue to be the quarterback until Drew Brees comes back, whenever that is. And you mentioned it's critical to win these games down the stretch, but it's more critical to have your 40-plus-something-year-old quarterback fully healthy and ready for the postseason when that begins. And so they're going to give him that time. And when they designate him to return off injury reserve. A lot of times what you see around the league is teams doing this to ramp up the players, to get them acclimated, to get them ready to come back. Not necessarily that first week like this week for Drew Brees and the Saints, but in the upcoming weeks. That's fair, and it is a good point. However, on the other side, I would like to give you an illustration of just how important it is to them to get the number one seed, not because they need the buy as much as they need not to have to go to Lambeau Field. Mm -hmm. If you're wondering what Lambeau <laughs> Field in January is like, I present for you Exhibit A. That was Tom Coughlin's face. So if you think a 41-year-old quarterback needs to be playing in that, coming back and, and, from 11 broken ribs,